Oh, uh, hey kids. How's it going? I'm Mr. Earhart. It's time for Tuesday Tuck-In. And today we're going to be reading Abe Lincoln's Dream by Lane Smith. One of my favorites. Here we go. Let's get started. All right. The first page I love because it's just a picture of a dog. And it's fabulous. Mm -hmm. Love dogs. All right, in 1943, Fala wouldn't enter that room, and in 1968, neither would Yuki, and in 1985, or Rex. These dogs didn't want to go into the room. I wonder why. Some said they saw the ghost on the 12th of February, but on that day, everyone was wearing stovepipe hats, so, you, so who could tell? Everybody wearing a hat. So great. A girl wandered from her tour, discovered a man standing over the Gettysburg Address. Hi, said Quincy. Well, hello, child, he said. He was dressed in black from hat to boot, but she wasn't frightened. He had a long face that made her feel sorry for him. Are you lost? she asked. I don't think so, he said, walking through a wall. You look confused. Why, I'm right as rain, he said. Are you sure? Well, not really. No ghosts are no good at telling fibs, he said. You can see right through them. That is a very silly joke, she said. He returned with a rose. Truth is, I'm thinking of a dream I had last night, he said. It's always the same. I'm on a ship sailing rapidly for some shore I know not where. In my nightmares, I'm in class, she said. Naked as a jaybird, totally embarrassing. I wouldn't worry, that's a common dream, he said, like the one where bears have gotten into your cabin. paced the floor. You're tall, she said, taking four steps at, at, to his one. Do you know how long a man's legs should be, he asked. No. Long enough to reach the floor. She thought this joke was sillier than the last, but she laughed to be, to be polite. I apologize if I appear restless, but there was so much to do beyond 1865. Our reunion was so fragile, so uncertain, like that ship on the rocky sea. She led him to the door. Oh no, I never leave the executive mansion, he protested. You should, she said. A lot has changed since 1965, including the name of the executive mansion. We just call it the White House now. The ghost did the flying. The girl answered the questions. Are we the United States, he asked. Did that work out? Yeah, that worked out fine. And equality for all, he asked. Yeah, that's working out too, she said. It's getting better all the time. And man, he asked, does he no longer fuss and fight with his fellow man? We're still working on that one. But I think overall the Founding Fathers would be proud of our progress, don't you? said Quincy. Why, I think they would be over the moon. Over the moon, yes. There's one last thing I want to show you, she said. My stars, he said, we have come a long way. Three cheers and bollyhoo! It's a 
picture of him on the moon. His tour over, he returned her to hers as he began to disappear one final time. Knock, knock, she said. Who's there, he said. Orange. Orange who? Orange, you feeling better now? That is a very silly joke, he said. That night, Quincy had a dream. She dreamed of a man, a tall man in black, on a boat moving rapidly toward the rising sun. He was smiling. And that's the end of that book. I love that book because um, one of my favorite histo people from history is Abraham Lincoln. And it's just, a, it's just a fun children's book that I've read to my kids and that I hope that you enjoy as well. Thank you. And good night.